And I know you got that winning mentality, so I want to ask you, like, where does that come from? A hundred percent of it comes from my dad. <laughs> and the other zero um, percent, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> <laughs> How is that? He motivates you? He Does he give you, like, inspirational I mean, he wins or? most of his fights, so... Okay. <laughs> Today in the Miami Hustle, we got Yuli Monster Diaz back again with his son, another warrior. We got Yuli Jr. in the building. The monster and the little monster. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, I'm blessed to have you guys in the Miami Hustle. Yeah. We're all thank you, thank you for having me. We're all me. honored for you guys to be here and hear your story because it's a good one. It's an amazing one. It ins it's inspired me. You know everything you're dad has gone through inspired me a lot and now when I heard everything that you've been through within these past 12 months it inspired me a lot too so first of all so that everyone listening can get to know you a little bit how old are you um 11 years old I just turned 11 on March 3rd nice and um happy belated and I um and I just beat cancer you just beat cancer <laughs> at 10 years old at that's 10 right. years old that's, that's right. amazing that's I mean right. within itself like I can only imagine what you went through as, you know, yeah. battling that and then what you went through as a parent. Yeah. So this happened when? When were you diagnosed? Crazy thing is I was diagnosed on March 14. March 14 is my dad's birthday. Yeah. Wow, that is yeah. crazy. Yeah. What are the chances? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was it was exactly 11 days from my birthday. Yeah. It was around like late at night, 11ish or uh, like around that time. So like we, like it was either a normal tumor that's just in my body that they could take out, or it was cancer, right? So, obviously, we're gonna hope for the best, like it's just a tumor. I didn't even know none of this was happening because, you know, like, I'm a kid, why would they tell me automatically? Because, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And then my dad, like, my dad just came in the room one day crying, like, sobbing. <laughs> Like, you know, and like, I, I can imagine that why he like, you know, because in my head, I'm like, what is this guy crying about? Like, <laughs> this guy's a fighter. I've never seen this guy cry, yeah. you know? <laughs> and then, then this lady, um, her name is G uh, Giselle, right? Yeah. She, she was like explaining. Then she got into chemotherapy. Like, you know, I'm not very familiar with cancer, but like, I know what chemotherapy is. Right. I'm like, I need to take chemotherapy. Well, like for the first five minutes, I was crying, you know, because like, is it like it's hard to take? But the second thing that I wasn't crying about is that I, ha I don't have to do school at least. No you know? way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, well, it's a blessing that I'm here today at least, you know. It is. Uh -huh, because not many people could do this fight that I did, you know. That's right. Mm -hmm. But um, like, so we started in March. When March when March hit, they they I was in the sixth floor. I I remember exactly what room I was in. I was two o five. Well, it was like level um the yeah. sixth tower. Yeah. It was six but six two o five, right? I remember the exact day. Next to me there was this lady that had the same exact cancer. She came from Costa Rica actually, yeah. and she, and then uh, my godmother, that she's like she's like one of my the moms like you know. She was, she was there and she was like telling me all about this girl um, saying she has the same cancer. And then that was also an inspiration to me because I'm like, she has it and I have it, I could do it then. Like, yeah. you know, this this girl had it for so long. She came from Costa Rica. And the doctor that got her is actually was my doctor, you know? So I'm like, I got this, I got this. Um, the first step of that battle, I would say, is yeah. positive thinking. Oh, so. yeah, and the chemo, like, it's like poison going in your body. So I can mm. imagine how, like, that, how much that hurt my stomach, you know? So I took my first chemo. I remember what they called it. It was like Red Devil or something, That's right? right. Wow. When I tell you that thing was like orange, reddish, I was, I was throwing up looking at it every time <laughs> I saw it. It was like, Ugh, ugh. <laughs> Sorry that I'm talking with my hands, guys. No, we're from Miami. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, then, like, I took it, but right before I was eating samurai, you know, samurai was always my cravings that I love. Yeah. And they're always telling me, once you eat something, you're going to eat that for like three months. And then, like, 
I ate, I ate some samurai, and that thing, I threw it up a second later after I took that thing. That thing gets you sick, sick, sick. Like, sick, you don't even want to, like, talk or anything. Yeah, I mean, right? that's, that's, the samurai is good. That's yeah, a good samurai choice. is good. <laughs> and what type of cancer was it? It was osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma is a bone cancer. It could be in, it mostly happens to kids around the like age of like eight like, like nine to like eight yeah. or nine to like 18 yeah. is around the range that it happens uh, to, and it ha mostly happens to boys it could happen to girls as well but it's a lot more prevalent in boys rewind a little i had my he, he was my uncle's like not his nephew but you know we say like nephew yeah. because they're like really close with each right. other right his name was ramon yeah had the same cancer. It was even worse because it was on his knee, right? He, and then like, and then my dad, my da like it was my dad's birthday. Everybody's hitting him up, saying what you doing today, you know? <laughs> so and then I'm and then he's like, bro, he calls that one friend, bro. I'm in the hospital right now. He's like, why are you in the hospital? What happened? Junior, I'm with Junior right now. He's like, like what happened? He has something on his leg. He says, bro, I'm not trying to be negative, but I got this boy. Um, he had pain on his leg. They found out it was cancer. And like, you know, my uncle is such a positivity, positivity spreads all the positivity around you. Like he's, he's funny too, you know? Then he calls up the guy to come like inspiring me, you know, because like I'm just a 10 year old kid sitting in that bed like thinking, oh, I can't see my friends that much anymore. Like I can't do yeah, sleepovers. Yeah, they can't like, you know, I got to be like more secure now. Like like it's just sleep. Like I, I used to get no sleep in the hospital. It was all nighters every day, you know. <laughs> yeah, like the only people that would get sleep. No, my dad even won't, won't even get that much sleep, you know. Um. But, like, the best thing I could do is just, like, talk to my friends because they make me happy and stuff. But, um, so what I was saying, Ramon, Ramon had cancer on his knee, beat it, he, and and then he was, like, he was telling me, like, bro, you got this. Like, you don't have to worry about nothing. There's going to be pain. He said, I don't want to lie to you, but, like, there's going to be pain regardless. Then, like, it, it was, like, shocking hearing that from him because, you know, he, he had it on his knee and I had it from my femur. So, I'm like, in my head, I'm like, what do I got to worry about, you know? Yeah. So then I think in April, around that, I broke my leg. I broke my leg because it was very brittle. They had to take a biopsy. When you take that biopsy, it happened, it, it, it makes the leg very easy to break. So one day I had to go in my wheelchair because some uh, incident happened. Uh, then the incident happened, so I, I so like I broke my leg, and then for three days straight, like, but my dad was like, my dad said, bro, I don't know if it's broken or not because if it was broken, he wouldn't be acting like this. It would have been he wouldn't have been sobbing, crying, you know, like. But when he said that, I actually like. It warmed my heart because it was broken. I knew in my heart it was broken, but like, you know, in the outside it doesn't look broken, so I can't blame him. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. when I tell you, it like, it felt broken, like, I, it, I couldn't move at all. How was the pain? The pain was, like, what, at the moment it was way worse than, right. like, two days I was chilling, playing Fortnite, you know, on my <laughs> phone, texting people, and, and then, and then, like, my dad even called up the guy that, like, used to do PT on me. He said, yo, he wouldn't, like, like, don't you think he wouldn't be acting like this if the leg was broken? Yeah, because he was like, I, I initially, right when it happened, it was it was painful. You know, and he was like, I think I broke my leg, I think I broke my leg. And, and I'm an optimist, and I'm hoping for the best of the moment, especially with your kid. So I'm like, no, I don't think it's broken. You know, we're looking. I called everybody I knew. I called my guy, Pete. Shout out to Pete, who does PT. Um, he came. And he's like, man, I don't think it's broken because he wouldn't be like chilling. He was like playing video games and stuff. And uh, sorry, go ahead. You tell him the rest. Yeah, of yeah. I guess you can handle, you can yeah. handle yeah. pain. Like yeah. Yeah. On the couch, you know. <laughs> and I had like no medicine to calm me down, like yeah. no anything. So and then my dad was like, like told Pete, and then Pete said the same thing. So 
that day I, it was a little over dramatic i'm gonna admit it but he had to call an ambulance because i can't move like at all mm -hmm. you know i can't be on a wheelchair going well yeah but let's tell him so so he, he when that happened to his leg it was like a friday night we had just gone from the hospital we had to be back monday morning so he spent the weekend at the house mm -hmm. with his leg uh fractured broken pretty much and um and sunday we also called the nurse, who was the head nurse for his oncologist, and we said, hey, come over here. She came to our house on a Sunday. Shout out to her, because wow. she's an amazing person. Uh, yeah, we've become, like, basically family over this time, you know? Yeah. And she came over, and she took pictures, sent it to his oncologist, and, and everybody threw pictures and stuff. You can't tell if it's broken, you know? But, like, girl, we're going to find out Monday. On Monday, we'll bring him in and do everything we had to do. So tell them what happened Monday morning. So, like, I couldn't go to x-rays, you know, because on x-rays you had to go on the thing. So they had to get this thing, put it under me. When I tell you how it's so painful, <laughs> because you had to get up, and then it goes on you, like, and it's pushing like this. So it's like, oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. You know? So, but thank God, found out it was broken. Then I was like, I was like, I knew I, I, I knew it wasn't. I'm not saying my dad was wrong, but like, you know, I was like, I told you guys, yeah, I yeah. told you guys, you know. But I knew, I, like, I knew at the moment it could have been something else too. But thank God, um, it, that happened because then I was in a cast, so it was easier to move around. Cause I feel like that actually happened for reasons because you know, um. With, Up until that point, he couldn't move his leg. He couldn't couldn't move anything. Once they put the cast on him, he got a little more comfortable doing things. So yeah, a little better. So you say it happened for a reason. Why do you say that? Because if just imagine if I had so much pain on my leg, and then like I would I would have broken it, or I would have just stayed with that pain on my leg and won't be able to move it as much as I did with a cast. Yeah. So yeah. just imagine I would have just stayed at home, and then ambulance comes like every weekend, you know. So that it was it happened for a reason in my opinion. Yeah, no, I mean it's always better to find the problem mm -hmm. like sooner. The sooner the better, definitely. Right. Yeah. right. And how was where were you at when you found out that he was diagnosed? Like where so were you in your life? So oh in my life I we had just come back from London. I had a, I was a co main event for Floyd Mayweather, so we literally just came back from London. His birthday is March third. Um this whole thing started March eighth. We had taken him because he had uh he had some pain, and they, they, we had, I had taken him for an x-rays and emergency, and they found, like, a lesion on his femur bone, he said. And then they let us go home. March 8th last year was about, like, a Thursday. They let us go home on Friday. They told him, go home for the weekend. On Monday, come back. Uh, that Sunday, March 12th, uh, I had taken him to do some arts and crafts, like, in, um, in Sunset Place. And walking to the place, he kind of hurt himself, felt like in the parking lot. I had to get him in the car. We rushed him to the hospital. And March 13th on Monday morning, they got him. They did PET scans, CAT scans, and uh, and they, they did a, they did an original biopsy there too. And then March 14th, which is my birthday, was the day they came back and like, all right, look, he has cancer, he has osteosarcoma, and this is the game plan. You know, it's it's uh, chemotherapy for 18 weeks, it's surgery, then it's 10 more weeks of chemotherapy, and you know and you know, at that point, you're, you're doing the math in your head. You're 18, 10, you're doing the math. You're like, man, well, you know, we're, we're going to be here all year. This is, you know, it, it's terrible just thinking that your son's got to be in the hospital for so long. Then, you know, again, he's 10 years old. He, he, he you know, chemotherapy, you hear about it, but you don't really know what it is. Uh, but, you know, as an adult, you know, it's poison to your body. It's They put poison in you to try to kill cancer cells, but at the same time, it's killing good cells as well. So... Uh, man, it was the hardest. I tell everybody, you know, it's it's harder than any fight I've ever been in. And like nothing can compare to to the pain of you, you know, going through that with your kid or your kid going through that, you know. And all you want is for for you know. I believe in God. I'm not. I'm gonna say I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. And you know, I pray and I and I give thanks all the time. And all I would do every day was tell God to please just pass that pass it on to me. You know, it was a tough tough time. Yeah, I I mean, I'm super spiritual too and I believe in God as well. Do you would you say that you're spiritual and you believe in God? Uh, yeah. For sure. Did you have a lot My of My grandma faith always prays before I go to school and yeah. like, you know, I like it. And like I I always pray too, you, you know. You said grandma? 
Yeah. Grandma, grandma. Shout out to grandma. Shout out to grandma. Shout out to grandma. Out to grandma. No, and, and Junior, is, Junior is, as you can tell, he's great at speaking. So we have him pray over dinner. You know, when we do big family oh, nice. dinners, Junior, nice. Junior leads the prayer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was your faith this strong uh, before you got diagnosed or it, it became always been stronger? Strong. I, always, I, always, I was always like my dad's strong. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, you have a great role model to look yeah. up to. Thank I was going to ask you, too, when you see your dad in these fights, how do you feel? Oh, I'm peeing. I'm peeing right I'm now. Pe- <laughs> yeah, I'm peeing, bro. Um, you get nervous? Yeah, I get nervous. Who gets more nervous before a fight? You or the fighter? Oh, no. My dad doesn't get nervous. He, okay. My dad That's doesn't get answer. nervous, bro. Like, he, this guy just says, oh, I'm going to knock him out. He's going to lose. We're going to go <laughs> home to a, like um, to an after party. <laughs> then me, <laughs> you know. But it, it, I like I know he's gonna win, but I don't want him to get hurt. God forsake him, um, something happens. Like you know, because a lot of those injuries are career ending and stuff. So yeah, that's that's. Yeah. I mean, I could imagine like that's super nerve nerve rent, nerve everything when you watch your yeah, dad going in there. But I'm not gonna be nervous when he knocks out Zion Thompson on May 10th. Let's go. Hey, <laughs> you heard it here first. That's yeah. right. You see, you got the confidence just like your dad, too. I feel like the faith and the confidence were big factors with you going into chemotherapy. Yeah. How was that for you? And are you still doing chemotherapy? No, I'm, I'm done. I rung the bell on November 10th, I think. Yeah, he's right? cancer-free. Cancer November cancer 10th, free, it was God. on a Friday. And then November 11th was my after party. I threw an after party, hey. like a thousand people were there. Yeah. Hey, just yeah. like a fighter that won the yeah. fight. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. how it should be. Yeah, that's we, amazing. We, yeah, we rented him a badass mansion, a pool party, had all nice. his homies over sleep over. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah. Nice. That's wow. amazing. Yeah, man. So, but you mentioned that it's about an 18 month process. So, you beat it early? No, well, no, no, not 18 months. It's 18, so, it's 18 weeks. Then you got surgery, and after oh, surgery, weeks. you take about four weeks off of surgery before you do chemotherapy. You let the bone kind of heal up a little bit, then 10 more weeks. So altogether, it was from March to November, we were in the hospital, in and out of the hospital, mostly in the hospital. Uh, November, he got to ring the bell. You know, when you ring the bell, it's like a ceremonial thing that they do for people who be cancer. The little girl that he had mentioned earlier that came from Costa Rica, uh, her name was Ariana. She had the same osteosarcoma that he had, but it metastasized. And, uh, you know, rest in peace, she, she passed away about a week ago. Um, we, we, we had to go see her and, and, her and her family. So, you know, he, he was around that on a constant basis. Well, we're, we're living in the hospital. So living in the hospital, the, the bell is in the hallway of the hospital where the rooms are. So you'll have one day where a kid rings a bell and then you'll have maybe that same day, if not the next day or a couple of days later, our nurse will come in. You know, we made friends with all these nurses. We've been there. You know, almost a year, we become kind of family, and they come in and say, man, this person passed away. And, and these people you see in the hallway, you see their family in the place where you go eat, in the, you know, in the, in, the, in the meeting room there where everybody eats. And uh, everybody would come around our room, and, you know, Junior was a super popular kid in the hallway, so all the nurses and all the people loved him there. So you would have one kid beating in, and you, you would have somebody else pass away. And, and it, was a, it, was a, it was a really crazy time, man, uh, you know. More for him that he was going through it, and, and, and as a parent, you know, just being a human, man, you get all types of crazy thoughts at all times, you know, if we're going through this. And again, we're just blessed that he's on, on the great side of it. And uh, he's uh, an inspiration for me, motivation for me, and not only me, for, for many people. He's going to be able, you know, he's going to be able one day soon, he's going to be able to speak, go to back to the sixth floor where, and, and speak to kids where that, nice. you know, tell them what he was going through. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I I think the same way. I feel like you're an inspiration. You are too, but also your son is an inspiration to millions of people around the world. Absolutely. Anyone that's going through it currently that's fighting cancer or anyone that's just, you know, having someone fighting cancer or just anyone in general, that it shows that if, if you know, if you have enough faith and you keep it strong and you keep your yourself positive, then anything is possible and you could make it to the other side, you know, yeah. God willing. Right. So how I would say your your recovery process right now is going pretty fast, right? Yeah, it is. It's going pretty fast, and um, God for say, uh, hopefully I can walk in um, a few weeks. Yeah, he's actually he could actually walk now. He's just limping, so he's well, he's doing a lot of PT because he was off his leg for basically a year. So he has a little muscle atrophy, so he has to do a lot of uh, physical therapy to just, you know, get back to it. And it's it's a lot of, like, building muscle to get back 
being able to walk and it's a lot you know still in, in your head a little bit where he hasn't done it for so long he has to get the mechanics back going you know yeah i saw him taking jump shots <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Out here. we have a little yeah. hoop he's yeah. here taking jump shots off one foot yeah we got a basketball court at home he's still you know nice. he gets on his wheelchair he rolls around and when it's time to like play defense he kind of gets off the chair and plays <laughs> deep. uh he's got a great mentality man he's got a great mentality that that i think really helped him through his whole process is really staying positive you know, uh, and like, again, we're all human. We have those negative dark days, you know, and and he, he has a great support, uh, you know, support group. So, you know, a, a, a family that supports him and people behind him that support him, with friends. Uh, he has great friends, man. He had a ton of friends come to the hospital and come visit him. Um, they come to the house and come see him at all times. You know, they, they brought him all types of food, anything he wanted to eat. And um, it's been, a, it's been, you know, for a bad terrible situation uh we could say that we had a, a a good experience with it you know we went through the the dark times but it was always like somebody there to support him and somebody there to uplift him yeah that's amazing man yeah. and how was it seeing your dad on that last fight oh that last fight he came <laughs> off a little crazy that's what i was scared <laughs> yeah. i wasn't scared till he came off crazy like that i was like <laughs> the three second knockout <laughs> nah, and then it, bit, it was one second i'm like nah <laughs> but um bit out of nowhere he started bleeding you know because i saw him throwing hands and the guy didn't throw one like hand, like you know and then and then at the end of the fight i'm like dad what are you bleeding from I got headbutted. I'm like, oh, oh okay. my God, bro. Like, <laughs> your memory is just getting worse. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a big fight. We were yeah, all there, and yeah. and yeah, it was quick. It was yeah. quick. He came out swinging, yeah, for yeah. sure. And I get nervous, too, man. When I see that happen, like, yeah. in bare knuckle especially. Like, oh, my God, my friends were behind me. They are like, saying, I'm about to cry. Yeah. I'm about to cry. <laughs> yeah, because bare knuckle is like, you really never oh, know what's going to happen. Right there. It is intense. Yeah, yeah. How many fights have you seen? BKC and BYB or just BYB? Like all no, together. All together. How many fights? Yeah. All right. So even wrestling too. Yeah. I know yeah, you I like wrestling. wrestling. Yeah. I I I've been to a lot, but my dad's fights I've been to six BKC and BYB, and um and then probably like in total I've been to three other BKC and BYBs. I just nice. went to the April fourth one. That was a good card. No, but he's been to all my boxing. He's been to all my. Fights, oh yeah, all, all the boxing yeah. fights. But he said bare knuckle though. Oh my bad. Yeah. No, I was yeah. saying just all the fights. Oh, Even yeah, wrestling. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna ask yeah, you yeah. which one you like the most out of all the fighting ones oh. you've seen. I feel like BYB is so much action. Like the other day, Ryan just slapped the hell out of Cub Hawkins. That was crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was crazy. But who came out victorious? Well, Cub Hawkins, which is crazy. Yeah, like, it's you know, him, it was a good fight. Every, they're both bleeding like crazy and everything. Yeah, he who last, last, last best, they say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like I'm big on karma. So when I saw him slap the banana out of him or smack, <laughs> smack him so hard, the banana fell no, out. No, and the like, guy oh, was like, guy. and for a second, you could see Cub Hawkins like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. He, he definitely didn't see that coming. No, no. And I, I don't like sucker punches, you know? Yeah. I feel like if you're going to swing at someone, make sure their hands are up at least. Don't just mm -hmm. be knocking someone out while he's eating a banana. Like, yeah. that's kind of fucked that, up. That's true. And I actually <laughs> spoke to, uh, to Jet the next day, and I, I was like, uh, they had some, some beef going on already before, you know? So... I was like, look, I understand that, but at the at the same time, you almost messed up your money. Like, if you would have if you would have hurt him in any way, you wouldn't have got paid for fighting. You probably would have been done fighting. So, so. Yeah, and I saw you out there uh, looking fresh. Thank you. Thank a you, nice yeah. suit. Thank you. Yeah. It's nice to see you in a yeah. suit. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you're at these events. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. How was that for you? You got to. Uh, it's amazing, man. I'm I'm uh so I'm signed to BYB as a fighter and also as an ambassador for the promotion. So anytime they have a fight, you'll see me dress up in a suit, doing some commentary. You know, speaking of fighters. And uh, helping the promotion, you know, uh, come up in any way I can because uh, they're great people to work for. They're stand-up guys. Um, I love pe I love working for them, you know, and being a fighter for them because uh, when they tell you something, you can, you can take it to the bank, you know. And, and yeah. it's, it's great to have that, as especially as a fighter. And how do you like commentating? I love commentating, man. You know, I just turned 43 years old the other day. I'm still fighting. I still got a couple fights in me. Um, <laughs> but... You know, you got to look for an exit, exit strategy when it comes to this fight game. Not too many fighters, uh, you know, uh, do that. And, and this thing doesn't last forever and there's no retirement plan. There's no 401k in fighting. So you have to look for your exit strategy out. And I think something for me, either behind the scenes or in front, you know, behind the camera or in front of the camera, whatever it may be, uh, could, 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 
could possibly be something in the future. Yeah, for sure. You guys definitely both have a bright future. Yeah. You're looking like Joe Rogan out here. That's, I'm trying. I'm trying, man. I love Joe <laughs> he's Rogan. He's commentating yeah. and he's on the podcast. That's right. That's right. Negative to positive, and now you got another podcast yeah. with your son, too. Right. You guys want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. man. That's going great. Tell them about it. Well, go tune in on a day in Miami. They post it on my dad's Instagram. It's there, too. And um, I want you guys to comment on the video and and see what you, what is your guys' opinion. Yeah, I like that. I like that, yeah. yeah. He's um, a pro. <laughs> yeah, he's actually, he's very, very creative. He comes up with a ton of great ideas. And uh, most of the things that you see me, like the questions that you see me answer on on, on my Instagram, the, the reels we made are questions he made up himself. So, nice. uh, yeah, and this is something that I've been actually wanting to do. Uh, is uh is have a podcast with my son because as you can see he's very good at speaking and uh and you know this is building a future for him so because as he grows up to be uh, a young adult and even uh you know a, a young man he's gonna need uh people skills and talk, you know be able to talk to people and be able to you know uh, know how to carry himself and i feel with podcasting and be able, being able to answer questions or ask questions to people uh, really develops your communication skills. Yeah, and you learn a lot too from others. Yeah. That's right. And as you learn from others, you learn about their story. And when right. you hear their story, it even inspires you. Absolutely. Like your story is super inspiring, but you're going to meet a lot of people doing this podcast that it's going to like light another fire under you. That's right. Yeah. And it's going to make you want to reach for greatness. And I know you got that winning mentality. So I want to ask you, like, where does that come from? 100% of it comes from my dad. <laughs> and the other um, 0%, I don't know what it comes from. <laughs> How is that? He motivates you? He Does he give you, like, inspirational I mean, he wins or? most of his fights, so. <laughs> so yeah, not... but um, the only mentality, you know, he's always, like, he he never says loses. He says he learns, you know. Um, he never thinks he's going to lose, which is, that's a great thing to think. Because if you think you're going to lose, then you're just being... Uh, you're just a loser. You're not a learner. So um, I, I think that's where I get my most of my winning mentality from. Yeah, that's facts. And I think uh, I think your your state of mind and the way you think and the way you you project things is is half the fight already. So you know if if you're thinking or saying you're gonna you might lose or something like that, you, you you're halfway done with the fight and it's not even started. You know so. Yeah. Keep that positive mentality, and it's not just in fighting; it's in life itself. You know what I mean? Um, I, 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 on a daily basis, I send him positive quotes and I read things nice. to him, you know, and um, that's important. Yeah. And that's we have it. something we do on a daily basis. We've been doing this for a couple of years is a, a one dictionary word a day. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We get one dictionary word a day. We get the word and we get the, the definition. That's big. All yeah. that is training your subconscious and your yeah. subconscious is what's going to guide you, basically. So to so those good habits, which are hard to, to do and be disciplined with, the subconscious mind is what's going to guide you to that. And yeah. sending him all these positive things is a great way to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, he's, uh, and I like he's, I, I was going to say, I like what you said, too. Um, you, don't be a loser. Be a learner. Yeah. Right. I've never heard that before. That's, <laughs> That's nice. Right. That's right. And he's a huge fight fan. He, he knows more about like UFC and boxing than I do. So, you know? mm -hmm. When it comes to like stats and stuff, he, he keeps me up on game and all this. So. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I love UFC. You know? UFC is the stuff. Who's your favorite fighter in UFC? And in wrestling, I'm curious. Okay, WWE wrestling? Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I met Dana Brooke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, if I'm going to be for real, I'm going to, I like Rey Mysterio. Nice. You know, Rey Mysterio is the man. Yeah. He's little. I feel like he just uh, has all those skills. Or, you know, The Undertaker. Oh, of course. Right. Those are OGs in yeah. the game. Yeah. I, I, I grew up watching them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and they're yeah. still out there. That's he just amazing. made a comeback in WrestleMania this weekend. He made a... Uh, I saw, yeah, they're came still back out there. And I think he Stone Cold uh, The Rock, I think. Yeah, not, to, not Stone Cold. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Tombstone. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was crazy. The Rock is even still in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all these guys I grew up watching. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And, and then UFC, you said. Um, oh, this is hard because UFC <laughs> has all these good fighters. Yeah, There's a lot of them, yeah. How about this? Let's, let's do it simple. We got UFC 300 coming up right now, right? Uh, Alex Pereira. I was against about to Jamal say a uh, fighter. Okay, who do you like? John Bone Jones. Oh, he's a man. He's a man. He's a man. Yeah, he's a man. That's and his only loss is for someone almost killing someone. You know. Yeah, so. yeah. It was a, it was a, it was a disqualification, not even a loss. Yeah, that's undisputed right there. He's he's gonna be the champ for for years to come. That's right. That's a tough one to beat. That's right. <laughs> and I know you mentioned you got surgery tomorrow, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How's that gonna be? What's the surgery for? Is that um, part of the recovery process? It's it's just part of the recovery 
process is only making me better, you know. So um, it's that mentality we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. That's an amazing answer. You know, they're you know, just like, gonna open the uh, thing, see what's up in there, and then um, say hi. I'm gonna fix you and <laughs> close that right back up. You, you know? really. You're, good, you're, you're a true inspiration out there because you, you really have that winning mentality. Like, I love what you said about most people might think surgery and be scared or be like, oh, no, like, bad thing. But instantly you're like, it's making me better. That's a great way to think about that. That's a championship mind. You know, yeah. I'm nervous about it, but, like, what I said, it's only making me better. So. If you have faith and you know that God is with you, then all those nerves just go away. That's right. That's right. And, it's, and again, uh, you know, uh, it's normal to be nervous. You know, it's normal to be, ner normal to be nervous and... Uh, Normal to be nervous going into a fight, going into a surgery, you know, things that, 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 you know, you're going into the unknown, but he's in great hands, you know, uh, the doctors that are working on him are, are doctors that worked on him while he had the, the cancer. So everybody knows him real well, they love him. So it's just a little uh, maintenance surgery, something that, that happens with, with what he has going on and they're gonna go tighten everything up and come out of there, uh, you know. I'm, I'm more of a winner than he already is. Yeah, it's like the NASCAR is going into the pit stop. That's right. That's right. Tune you up. <laughs> tune you up, and then back to recovery. Rewind a little. Let's talk about UFC 300. That's okay. a great card right there. Yeah, it is a great card. Yeah, I only, I only know. Be a, a commentator few fights too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I only know a few fights over there, but like, we're gonna be talking about that on our podcast probably, that's and right. you know, that's probably right. betting on each other. That's right. That's right. Okay, so okay. Push ups. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys bet with push ups. Yeah, that's a good yeah, way to bet. Either push ups or arm curls, because I can't really do. I mean, hey, even if you lose, and you're getting better, right? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. a great way to bet. Yeah. That's a great. Hey, listen. I mean, shout out DraftKings too, though. That's a good yeah, way to bet too. Yeah, shout out to DraftKings, absolutely. <laughs> Yuli Monster, use that code Yuli Monster, man. Get yourself five bucks to bet on. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so three hundred. Who, who else you got? Um. How about? Uh, isn't Pereira fighting Yan again? Uh, no, no, he's fighting. He's fighting Jamal Hill. Jamal Hill. That's oh, that's gonna fight. be such a good fight. I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. Um, so I'm going like this guy. I'm just <laughs> when I go like this, I'm excited. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like uh, I'm like, oh my god. Um, but I feel like John, John uh, Jamal Hill is gonna shock the world. You think so? I it's, think he's gonna shock the world. Tell him that. Tell tell Pereira, who's the real champ. You know, he be um. T I don't know how to pronounce his name, but he's a good fighter. Um, Texina. Yeah. He's in yeah. uh, um Alex Pereira. Yeah, Glover Teixeira. Yeah. Glover Teixeira. Yeah, 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 yeah. And. And he, he was a good fighter, you yeah, know? He was. And, and he beat Yuri, uh, Jamal Hill, I That's think. Right. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, so. It's gonna be a, definitely going to be a good fight. Th yeah. The best is fight. Three, 300 is the one that they're going to do in the spear or no? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure. I think it might be. Is it? Is it? It's in, I know it's in Vegas. Uh, the fight I'm know. looking forward to is uh, Max Holloway and Justin Gagey. So that's gonna be a. Oh, that's gonna be a nasty fight. Yeah. Shout out to Justin Gagey. I actually met him yeah, the, yeah. not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell him about that. Where were we? Oh, we're at Celebrity Sweat in Las Vegas. Okay. I'm I'm with my boy Justin Gagey. He he's such a nice guy, yeah. down to earth. You know, yeah. but like you you see him on TV, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's got a bottle of, uh, I hope he doesn't beat me up, you know, but like meeting him, he's such a sweetheart, I mean, you that's know, how I feel like, like he's like a teddy bear. Yeah. That's how I would feel meeting the boogeyman. We talked about that yeah, off yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's a scary person to meet. Yeah. That was cool. That was cool meeting the boogeyman, man. Yeah, and yeah. boogeyman eats some earthworms. You that's what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> Did you watch him eat worms live when you met him or not? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I... I I'm actually glad that he did because I was taking pictures with him. So imagine him talking okay. and his breath being on me. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah, we leave that for the he's, for the he's, ring. Like, he's like a 60 year old a jacked man. He yeah. he looks like he's in his 30s. Yeah, yeah. He's oh my in god. Shape. Yeah, yeah. Stay in shape. Look, yeah. look at the Rock. Yeah, exactly. The rock looks my like dad, he's still 32. My dad said, "Isn't it that crazy how he's six years old? Look at him." And I'm like, "He's 60? Yeah. No way." Uh, yeah. A little older. That's I think he's mid 60s. That's how your dad's gonna look too. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going for that. That's how you're going to look, too. We're all winners here. We're all champions. And speaking of winners, how do you feel about this next fight? Man, when I feel great. It? I feel May... great. Yeah, May 10th. It's in Denver, Colorado. I feel great about this, man. I find Zion Tomlinson. He's a young kid. I think he's like 24 years old. Um, he's a... Uh... He's a big uh, uh, troll online. He's been trolling me maybe for like, four, or really, honestly, he's been trying to troll me for like four years. It doesn't get to me. Um, he, he's trying, he's kind of hoping it does, and it never, and it never does. He said for four years. For four years, this, guy, this guy's been online. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, 
I think he's got a little bit of a Ever crush since on he me got that knockout. Yeah, sounds, like a, sounds like a streamer more than a fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he, a, he might have a crush on me. I don't know, but... Um, and the boy's cousin. But I'm going to end all that stuff on May 10th. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to knock him into another galaxy. Um, and we're, we're, work, you know, we're doing great work. I'm working with uh, my boy, Big Boy Boxing, David Peña on Tropical Park. We're getting ready for this. And uh, I'm excited for it, man. I'm excited to fight in Denver. You know what I mean? It's a mile high city. Uh, it's gonna be hard to acclimate over there. I don't know yeah. if you guys have ever been to Denver. It's hard to hard to it breathe. Is. Right when you get off the plane, you can feel it. But yeah. but we're gonna be ready for them. You're gonna go out there early to to get used. I'll to I'll be that out there a couple of days early. I'll be out there a couple of days early to to start acclimating. Mm -hmm. I got uh I got great friends out there. Shout out to Chris Camozzi. He's a Bellator fighter, a bare knuckle fighter himself. Mm -hmm. You know I'm gonna be in his gym getting ready. So, pops, did it um. Did you used to live in Colorado? I lived in Colorado as well. Yeah. So if you probably went to like a Denver, Colorado game, was when you went in that stadium, did you feel that uh, like it was a hard to breathe in there too? To be honest with you, when I used to land in Denver from Miami, the moment I get off the plane, you could feel it. It's like oh, your breath gets taken away a little bit. It's it's a little bit harder to breathe. And um, and I you know I had a lot of friends that lived out there. One of them lived so so Denver is fifty two eighty. It's a mile high. And then my boy lived 9,000 feet up, which is like almost 4,000 uh, 4, feet higher than the, than Denver. You could, you could actually see Denver down from his house. And going from like the basement up to like the second floor in his house, he used to run out of breath like it was, uh, you know, like a full court basketball yeah, game. Yeah, it's yeah. Full different yeah, It's wild. Yeah, the, the air's thinner up there. He said full uh, court basketball game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm going to use that to my advantage. And uh, I think in this fight, this guy's not going to have, you know, if I don't knock him out early, the but if cardio. it gets to the later on, later rounds, he's not gonna have the cardio to keep up, you know, up there. And and we're, I'm working my ass off to, to have my cardio through the roof. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> your fights are usually quick, so if you exactly. knock him out in the yeah, first yeah. round, the cardio doesn't even matter. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Just exactly. knock him out in the first ten seconds. That's what we're going for. And that's it. That's what, yeah, we're definitely <laughs> no going worries. for that. Yeah. <laughs> and how do you feel about? All this, your dad going out to this Oh, next this guy, fight. this guy's just a bum on the internet. Another <laughs> one, probably. Uh, you know, he, he probably like one of the Island Boys cousins talking all that. <laughs> uh huh. I might need to tell Nyquil to give him a little hey, ad check. Right, okay, shout, right, out right. shout out to Nyquil. Shout out to Nyquil. Uh -huh. Hey, shout out to Nyquil. He, we were with him this weekend. Uh, you we know, when, when we're oh, yeah, on yeah. Thursday, we were with him in Tampa. He was at the BYB fights, him and his dad. And uh, went to BYB fights together, and he just, they drove up to Georgia. He just won the Georgia Golden Gloves. He's a Georgia state champion. So shout out to, man. Shout out to no, Nyquil. Uh, how old is Nyquil, 10 or 11? 10. 10 year old Ten. kid, man. Florida state champ, Georgia state yeah. champ. He's, uh, he's really, he's really an inspiration and a motivation, man, because uh, at that age, he's, you know, he's grinding and he's, and he's, he's, he's doing it. He's doing it, you know, and it's, it's, it's amazing to see it. It really is amazing to see yeah. it. And honestly, NyQuil is an inspiration too. Like all, all of you guys are inspirations because a lot of times when I think about like being lazy or like, you know, not working out or not getting stuff done, I think about a 40 year old still in the fight game, still taking W's, yeah. a 10 year old fighting cancer and winning, and then a 10 year old in the gym every single day that's and right. he just got another belt. That's right. So it's that's like, right. there's no way that's I could right. be lazy when nah. I got these inspirations around absolutely, me. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. And and do me a favor his, uh, right now and go check out his um, Instagram, Nyquil. That's right. Nyquil yes, Nichols, yeah. That's a good friend right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and shout out to his dad, man. His dad is, uh, is, is behind him 1,000%. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's amazing. He's an amazing father as well, man. It's great to see great dads doing big things for their kids, you know, so. Yes, yeah. sir. Team dad. <laughs> yes, sir. Team Dad. Shout out Nicky Nichols. He's a true hustler, too. Yeah. Every time we're together, he's always, you know, talking about positivity and trying to get us yeah. connected to the right people and just always hustling like yeah. like us. Yeah, no, and he goes, he goes, you know, he goes up and out of his way to do things for his kids. He drives 45 minutes every day back and forth to take him just to take him to the gym for training. So, it's, you know, just the sacrifice, the sacrifices that, you know, that parents make for their kids are, you know, are, are amazing, you know, and definitely hats off to him. Yeah, definitely. That's that's what people don't really see behind the scenes, but it's a that's lot right. of sacrifice. That's right. And that's why they create winners, really. That's right. I mean, it, it, it's all the dads are the ones that create the winners, you know? That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, man, shout out to Nyquil. Shout out to you. We're going to keep documenting your success and, yeah. of course, your success as Thank well. You. This is already Yuli's second episode. That's so. Right. He's going to be back after I'm a couple Miami more Miami Hustle Ws. vet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're going to be a Miami Hustle vet, too. Yeah. Right. You got your surgery tomorrow. 
If you like, I would like to, you know, if it's cool with you, close out the show with a prayer Absolutely. by you we'll going like to your surgery tomorrow, and then we can continue to document your success. We'll have you back on and just keep doing your thing. Keep inspiring all these people out here. Absolutely. Before we get into prayer, I just want to say thank you uh, for giving us this opportunity to do this. Um, it's amazing what you've been doing. You know, I, I was here uh, I was here a while ago. You know, and, and to see what you've done from when I was here till, till now is amazing, man. You guys are really on the come up. Uh, the most important thing in my life and, and the thing that I preach to everybody is consistency. And you've stayed consistent. And uh, the more consistent you stay, the more doors open for you. And a lot of doors are opening for you guys. So congratulations to you. Appreciate to that. EJ behind the scenes that people don't, that people don't know you. about EJ back there busting yes, his ass sir. doing his thing too, you know. Here. And uh, shout out to my team, to Mikey, to Mr. Red. To, to AMG, shout out to Yusuf, that's my brother, man. He's, yes, he's uh, one of my sponsors and he's more like family. It's amazing to do what he does, for, you know, amazing to see what he does for his people and, and, and to be a part of it. So so shout out to all you guys for, for doing this. Thank you again for the opportunity. I appreciate that. Enjoy and I just want to say one thing. BYB, he's coming for that belt. Let's, Let's go, go, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so sir. close us all with a prayer. That's what Jimmy. I like to hear. Um, I do want to thank Jesus for me being in the place that I am today because without my dad, without him, I wouldn't be in the place that I am right now. And um, I just beat cancer, so that's a huge accomplishment. And he helped me with every second step of the way. And thanks for having me on this podcast. Um, and uh, let's finish this off with a banger this let's year. Do it. Let's yeah. do it. Let's go. This year is going to be everybody's best year. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 That's what I love to hear. This year is going to be everybody's best year. We're already on the way up. Great We're going to keep son. going up. <laughs> Until next time, Junior, you already know you're going to be a vet too. Let's go. <laughs> you're a now, but you're going to be a vet. That's right. That's right. You're going to be an early vet too. Anytime, bro. Thank you. You're a true inspiration.